All right. I think we're live. Uh, if you guys can hear me as we get some viewers in here, hopefully soon, um, let me know that you can hear me. So this is kind of impromptu. Um, you know, I just figured jump in here. I'm just kind of doing some editing and whatnot. Um, and yeah, I figure I'm kind of an open book. If you guys got any questions, whether that's about editing or, you know, shooting or gear or industry news or, you know, I'm probably not going to. Yeah, probably not going to like review any wedding films right now. So typically we go live every Thursday evening. But I know we've got people all around the world and obviously just people with crazy schedules and whatever. So like Thursday evening doesn't always work for everybody. It doesn't always even work for all of us. Like, I don't know the last time you saw myself, Jay and Jared all live on um, one Thursday evening. So um, yeah, guys, I don't know, uh, you know, if we got some wedding filmmakers in here, other filmmakers in here, or people who just like the channel. Um, I'm an open book. I've always firmly believe like there's nothing really off limits i'm happy to share anything so uh throw it in the comments um if we get a lot of people in here you know it, it might be kind of hard to sort through stuff and sift through it but i'll do my best to answer everything that i can and as i do that i will um be editing a wedding film as well also guys I'm very wide right now you can see I was like well I want to incorporate like my computer into this shot this is typically you know typically it's closer up on me you can't I mean you can see my backdrop here right like it doesn't even cover this whole frame of view right now uh, you can see part of my light I think that's like right here yeah yeah uh, so you know much more relaxed atmosphere I figured just easier to do it this way um, Yusef what's up hey everybody what's up Enosh Brand new living, love it. Oh, thanks, thanks for letting me know, guys. Um, for wedding films, Tascam DR40X to connect to a soundboard is good, or go with the Zoom H5. So I use the DR40. Um, I have used that for. Oh man, before I used the Zoom H4n, I've probably used the DR40 for five, six years, something like that. I love it. I've really never had issues. I've really never been like, you know. I've really never been like, oh, I wish I would have had something else. Um, also, guys, just FYI, like, yeah, relaxed setting. I've got, like, my phone. I've got text I got to respond to and stuff. So you might see me doing that at some point. Um, that, with that said, the H5 is also awesome. Like, there's not really, like, I actually haven't used the H5, so I will say that. I haven't personally used it, but everything I've read is great. You know, there's nothing. I ditched the H4n from Zoom because it couldn't take line levels. Um and I didn't want to use an attenuator and it just annoyed me. So that was ultimately why I switched right now though, like any of those were going to get the job done for you. Um, given you use them the right way, of course, uh, you could get into 32 bit floating. I don't think the zoom H five is 32 bit. Um, I know Jay loves the mix pre mix pre three. I think I could be wrong. Um, I've looked at getting that I, like I'm certainly interested, but it's kind of like You know what isn't broke don't fix it or whatever um, Like I don't know the the dr 40 still serves my needs. I don't really feel limited by it I don't feel like there are things where I'm like, oh, I wish I had 32 bit float like this way under recorded Like I seem to always be able to get the levels I need So uh, yeah, I would say dr 40 just because if you want my personal recommendation, I feel more comfortable recommending um something that i have actually used <coughs> Woo. um but uh but yeah i mean you're not really gonna go wrong with either of those um let's see how to work with some company par example um salah what's up i don't know if i pronounced your name correctly uh, i need you to kind of rephrase that question i don't know exactly what you're asking uh, brand new living what equipment do you use for live to film live ceremonies uh, so brand new living I'm assuming you're talking about live streaming um, I have done a few different solutions uh, I don't think I have oh I do have it out here so I have used this which is the Yolo box 
Um, so this is kind of like an all-in-one device. They did, just full transparency, they did like uh, sponsor Wedding Film School for um, two months or something like that. Uh, it was a certain amount of episodes of the of the live film critiques on Thursday nights. Um, I got this before they like sponsored us and whatever. Um, and they did also just actually send us, they have a new one, a pro version. I didn't get it. They sent it to Jay and Jared, um, which I think they liked. I think we have a video out on that. Don't quote me on that. It might be coming. It might be out. I can't remember. Um, this has worked really well. I, I love that it's just like, like it just sits on top of my camera and it's touch screen. I can swap between different angles. I can run multiple things in. So if you're looking for like, like, look, I would never really recommend shooting a wedding, like a highlight film and also doing a live stream by yourself. I think that's just asking for trouble. Live streaming just has a lot of variables to it. Um, but if you're looking for a simpler solution and you're okay just doing a one camera, maybe a two camera stream, the Yolo Box and the Yolo Pro does more than two actually, I believe it does three or four, but the Yolo Box or something like it is a great option. Um, if you want to like get in, I mean like, I basically always had my computer there as a backup. So I have done a few live streams of ceremonies through my computer through a program called OBS, which is what I'm using right now. And it's nice because I can like, here I'll show you guys, like I can like change things up. And I mean, you can do that on the Yolo box too, but like here's my, you know, now you see my screen and me in the bottom and you can kind of customize this to whatever you want. I've got like my logo, the wedding film school for when we start to go live, stuff like that. So, you know, it's nice. I don't want to say it's more reliable, but it's just more like, like you are relying on Yolo box servers, I believe, or something like that. So like, I, you know, I, it's just something to be aware of, I guess, but I've never really had issues with the Yolo box. I really liked it. And I just like, I mean, it's like basically in, like, I think the Yolo box costs like I mean, a little while ago it was like eight or nine hundred dollars, and now they came out with the pro, so it might even be less than that. And like, you make that back in one live stream, right? Like, I charge, I, it's like I was charging like a thousand, now I think it's fifteen hundred to live stream, and like, easily pays for itself. So it's a very like reduces my stress a little bit, which is nice. Um, but there are tons of ways to do it, and actually. So who was I responding to about that? Uh, this was Brand New Living. So Brand New Living, one of our most recent films on this channel is a behind the scenes video uh, from a real live wedding where Jay is live streaming uh, using um, a few different things that I did not mention here. He used the A10 Mini Pro. He has this kind of built out live streaming rig. So if you're really looking at getting into live streaming as like a, like I wanna get into this, I want a lot of my business to be this, he built out an awesome rig that's pretty inexpensive, works great, and has a lot of like variable uses. So go check that out. Um, yeah, Yusuf, no problem. Uh, Kino Drem TV saying that the DR40X is better. Yeah, I mean, I haven't used the H5. I know, yeah, you can do two different channels, so I love that. I assume the H5 can do that. Maybe I'm wrong, but yeah, you can do, I mean, you can run in, different inputs, which I think you can do on the H5. You can also record different levels. So I have like a track that I set the level to where I'm like, I think this is where I want it, right? But just in case something like peaks or somebody really yells in a mic or gets way close or whatever, I have another track recording that's, I think I have it set to 12 decibels lower. So it's kind of like a safety track. Um, so I like that. Bruno, I do photography and videography here in the UK. Every time I do only video, every photographer says we do all natural, non-pose, but then spend ages posing shots and fluffing dresses. Yeah, man, I mean, I'm with you. I don't think that's a UK specific thing. I think, um, you know, oh, man, it's so tough. Like, I think that's just part of it. You know, it's just one of those things that like, it's never really going to change. I think there are people when they're posing that are a little more non posed and natural. And I would, I would say that they're giving them direction as I would give them direction too, which are more like, uh, they're more, they're more directions than posing. That's a better way to put it. I would say. So like, it's like, Hey, hold hands and go for a walk. So it's like, it's, it's more like open to interpretation of what the couple kind of wants that to be. But yeah, I mean, there's going to be dress fluffing. There's going to be, you know, oh, it's all natural, non-posed, and then being super posy. Like, um, but with that said, I think there are photographers who, 
you know, maybe their style isn't all natural and is more posy. And working with somebody who is really, really posy, I think is significantly more difficult. Like the dress fluffs, whatever, like, yeah, it'd be great if I had the full 10 seconds of that shot instead of five seconds because somebody stepped into dress fluff or whatever. But I don't know. It's not the end of the world. And I don't really see, I guess I see it as something that like isn't going to change. So it's like, let's work on a solution or let's work on like a way to get around it or communicate around it or whatever. Um, because it's probably just not going to change. And communication is a big part of that for sure. So like, yeah, just letting people know what you need. Like, I'm just a big on like, I'm going to show up to a wedding. And if I get the vibe, like just from the beginning, like I'm super friendly, super easy to work with, but like, I am never going to act like what I'm doing is less important than what the photographer is doing. Because if I had a couple who insinuated that, I just wouldn't book them. And like, yeah, it's just not the case. So um, it's not the case to any of my couples and therefore it's not the case to me and I'm not gonna pretend like that's the case. So, you know, just letting a photographer know, not in a demanding way, like in a team player way of what you need and what you expect to is just a big part of that. Um, drones seem complicated. Any advice? Honestly, oh, if you think drones are complicated now, you should have flown a drone like eight years ago. Uh, drones are so smart, um, so packed with features. Um, look, it's important to know how to use it. It's important to do it legally by the books. If you're in the US, you need a part 107. If you're elsewhere, I don't know if you guys are in the chat from your country, let me know what you need to fly commercially. Um, there's even in the US, there's tons of misunderstanding about what you actually need. You do need a part 107. Um, I think they can be overused. I love them for setting the scene, you know, a couple shots. Maybe, 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 maybe I'll take it out with a couple. That's really rare. Maybe one wedding a year. I just don't really love it always. It has to be the right place and the right couple and the right timing. Um, but I don't think they're that complicated anymore. Like it, it it's something where it's going to be weird at the first couple times, like take it to a big open field and do a lot of research before. And I think they used to, I don't know if they still do. They have like a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I've been talking a lot. Um, they have like a, like a test pilot mode where you're actually, you're not flying the actual drones like on screen kind of. Um, so you could do that, but they've come a long ways. They're not that, that complicated and you'll get the hang of it pretty quick. Um, I work for a company that does not have a contract on owning the footage. Can I use it since I'm a solo shooter for them? They said don't, but how would you go about this? Um, Devin, it would probably depend where you're located. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to give you legal advice or not advice that can be used legally. I'll give you my thoughts, which are that, look, in my opinion, inherently, a second shooter is not allowed to use the footage they shot when they were contracted for another company. Um, it wasn't your booking. It wasn't your couple, your wedding, your job. Um, so, you know, my stance is that if it isn't explicitly implied that you can use it, then you can't use it. Now, legally speaking, maybe you can. I don't know what would happen if that were ever challenged, but I would also say if you want to grow, you grow through experience and it sounds like you have a company that will hire you to shoot for them and that experience has a lot of value. Um, it might not be what you want ultimately, but I think it's probably valuable now um, if you're in kind of more of the beginning stages. And I think that if you were to use footage you know, like it, maybe it's this gray area and maybe you're technically legally able to, and I don't know that, but uh, you're definitely burning that bridge if you do that. So, you know, that's my thought. Uh, yeah, Bruno, it is like that in the US as well. Uh, uh, well, let's see, hold on, I'm gonna, because we truly don't pose anything, but find every other photographer out there over posing. I, you know, I think we pose, like as video, we pose some stuff. I'll put people in nice light for prep. I'll instruct them, all right, let's do your tie. Um, you know, I try to, let's button up your buttons, whatever. Like I try not to make them redo stuff. I'm not, I don't like that. I know people who redo first looks. I don't like that. It's not what I wanna do. Um, but there's nothing wrong with it. Everybody does their own thing. Um, 
But as far as like posing like couple stuff, like I do some posing. I think it's more direction, like I was saying before. But um, yeah. How to plan and prepare to shoot a wedding? Well, geez, you guys, I'm not gonna get any work done, but that's cool, that's cool. I'm happy to answer all these questions. Um, how to plan and prepare to shoot a wedding? Well, ah, uh, man, that's such a big question. Um, honestly, the best advice that I always have for people is to sh second shoot or to assist or shoot under somebody else. You're gonna get real world experience and you're gonna do it without your name essentially being on the line without, you know, yeah, without your company being on the line. Uh, man, a lot of communication with the couple, just knowing what's scheduled for the day, communication with the photographer to know, you know, when and where you need to be, where, and when and where they need to be, what you guys each need, stuff like that. Um, having gear, having backup gear, having a solution for scenarios that are going to pop up. Like you might not be able to plug into a DJ soundboard. You might need to mic people up yourself. Um, you know, the venue might be dark. You might need a light. Your camera might go down. Uh, if you're delivering the whole ceremony and you're shooting on DSLRs or mirrorless that have a recording limit, you need multiple cameras. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot, but there's also like some amount of just like, I think another recommendation I always have is just like stick to the basics, learn how to tell a story on a monopod or a tripod and your camera, focus on lighting, focus on exposing correctly, focus on framing, movement and frame, telling a story. Don't bring a gimbal to your first wedding. Don't bring a drone to your first wedding. Leave the toys at home. Focus on what will forever be the foundation that a good wedding film is built on, and that is good story, good exposure, good filmmaking that doesn't need all the fancy stuff. I love the fancy stuff. I use a gimbal at every wedding. I use a drone at most weddings. But if I'm just starting out, focus on the basics. Um... Yeah, so Bruno is kind of like saying what I'm saying. We're like, whoever presses record it owns the footage. But yeah, I mean, you're you're definitely, it's like, it's like technically, I think if it were challenged in court and there was no contract, you might be okay. But like, it's definitely a big no-no. You're burning that bridge. And I think it's kind of assumed inherently in the industry that you don't really own the footage. Um... Bro, t please tell about your weapons, camera, lenses, gimbal. Yeah, I mean, I've got videos on this, guys. You can see uh, right now I'm running a Sony A7, uh, a Sony A7 III and a Sony A7S II uh, and an A6500 for like a backup camera. Um, I have the Mavic 2 Pro. I have the original, what is it, Zion Crane. Like this thing is like eight years old, 10 years old maybe. I don't know. It's super old. I love it. Um... I just don't, I don't love the way the other gimbals feel and I don't want, like, I have no need to upgrade. There's nothing about a new gimbal that makes me want to upgrade. So I am not upgrading and I haven't forever. And I've owned a lot of gimbals, like Zion, DJI, stuff like that. Like they've sent me a bunch of gimbals to test and review. I love them. They're good gimbals, but there's no reason for me to switch in my opinion. So, um, what else? Lights. I've got the Practolite. Uh, I really want to get, oh shoot, what is it? Uh, what's the new light? Anybody know? There's a new light. Forza, Forza 40, Forza, something like that. I can't remember the name. I saw it at WPPI. It was awesome and cheap. It's like 350 bucks. I want to get one of those. Um, I love the Practolite. I know people love the Aperture 60X. And I've got a bunch of this stuff linked in the description, actually. There's like, one of the first things in there is like the gear we use or something like that. So... It's a link to my kit page and it has all this stuff. Um, but yeah, Practolite is awesome. Yeah. Um, what else did you ask? Lenses. Uh, lenses, you know, mixed bag. Um, most of the day I'm on a Sony 55 on one camera and then a 16 to 35 Sony Zeiss as well on the other camera. But that switches, you know, for certain things. So, but that's like generally what I use. Mostly. Um, yeah, Devin, so you're using six audios and four cameras and getting $50. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the market you're in, the country you're in, whatever. Uh, you're saying you don't get paid fairly, so I would probably agree with you at that rate. Like, that's 
at least in my market, that would be insane. Most people are getting $50 an hour uh, for second shooting. But also, like, if you're not getting paid fairly, that's on you for accepting that job. Tell them no. Tell them your rate. Tell them what's fair. Work for somebody else. It doesn't mean you should screw them over and use the footage. Um, I, I like Again, I just don't know. I don't know what door you're like. I don't know what you're opening yourself up for there. Um, I probably wouldn't do it. But I would have a discussion with them about why I should be paid. Um, yeah, brand new living, no problem. Tian Reels, how do you approach a DJ to get audio for the ceremony and reception? What do you usually say? All right. Role play. You, the viewer, camera, or the DJ. I'll walk up, be like, hey, how's it going? Are you doing the audio today? And they'll be like, yeah. Yeah, I am. I don't know, whatever. And I'll say, awesome. Hey, I'm Bobby. I'm doing uh, their video. And then they'll say, oh, cool. Like, I'm, you know, I'm Bill. Yeah, I'm, I'm the DJ for the night. I'll say, cool. Like, do you mind if I get a feed from your audio system? And they'll say, yeah, that's no problem. Um, depending on kind of where they're at in their setup and when I see them, when I catch them, whatever, like if they're not really fully set up, I'm going to let them do their thing. And I'll say, cool. Like I'd love to test levels before, um, you know, before the ceremony starts, I'll probably find you in a couple hours. Um, once you're all set up, I'll let you do that. And then we can, we can plug in and test from there. Uh, if it is like 30 minutes before the ceremony, I'll be like, cool. Um, you know, if they, sometimes they ask what I need. Sometimes they say you can plug into the speaker. Sometimes they say whatever. I'll usually ask for what I want, which is generally I'm more interested in output from the back of the mic receiver. Like I just want as much, I really, I should be splitting feeds. I'm really interested in doing that next year. Um, I've talked to a couple of DJs and asked like, how would you respond? Would you let me do this? And they've both said yes. Um, they were also two of my favorite DJs to work with. So, you know, who knows? Um, but I might have that on hand, but anyway, uh, so I'm usually, no matter what they tell me, I'll just say, if they're like, yeah, you can plug into that speaker if you want, I'll say, cool, I'd love to put a backup in there. Um, do you happen to have uh, an output on the back of your mic uh, receiver if you're using a wireless mic that I could use? Because that's kind of like my preference. Because I just know like nothing the DJ does is gonna affect that and I like that. Um, yeah, I don't know, that's pretty much how it goes. I don't know, most D DJs are pretty open to it and if they're not, like if I ever had a DJ be like, no, you can't, I'd probably try to press them on like, why? Is it because they think that I'm not able to, they don't have an opening, which usually just means they don't know their system and I actually can get some somewhere uh, from their system or they're just you know being a dick and they don't want you to and whatever, in which case I'll be like, okay, um, you know, I, I can mic people up. Um, I, I, you know, I'd much prefer to rely on on your system as a backup, if nothing else. And if they still say no, I'll be like, okay, well, like, like I would have no, if a DJ was being a jerk to me, I would have no issue being like, okay, well, just so you know, if the couple's film turns out to have bad audio, like I'll be explaining to them why that's the case. So um, I think, you know, I don't know that I've really had to do that very often, but uh, yeah, that's how I approach it. Oh yeah, Bruno, that's like really posy. That's more than I, I do and more than I want. Um, yeah, I don't know. That might be like a, just a conversation you gotta have. if Especially if you've worked th with them before and you know. Like sometimes you just like, you're like, oh, you're super natural, unposed, awesome. Like pumped, like sweet. That means I'm gonna get good stuff. And then you get into the couple session and it's like, ooh, that is not the case. And then you gotta call an audible, right? And you gotta just, I don't know, like there could be, even if you get a little break or like, hey, maybe you do a first look and you do some couples photos and you know you have sunset photos later on and like it was not good. Uh, you were not getting what you needed. I like pull the photographer aside and just be like, hey, um, like I'm totally down during sunset if you wanna do your thing. Is it possible that I could direct for five minutes just cause I need stuff that's like a little more natural and, and not kind of moving in and out of this posed, unposed type thing, not really telling them where to put their hands and stuff like that. Um, or um, you know, one of the things that I run into a lot is photographers who move through poses way too fast. And some of my favorite photographers that I work with do this. And so I'll just remind them as I did from the very beginning, like the first time I worked with them where I just kind of pulled them aside and I was like, Hey, I love the stuff you're doing. Like it looks so good. The poses are natural, but it's just like, I need like five to 10 seconds of something to be able to use it. I can't really use much of what we got already. Like, are you able to just kind of slow things down a little bit just so I can make sure to get what I need to? 
And if they are a good person, team player, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, no problem. So I, that's not exactly what you're complaining about. But, uh, yeah. Um, am I getting the new MacBook Pro? Oh, I have not ordered it. Let's put it that way. Uh, I'm, like, big on, like, I mean, as as you can tell from my 10-year-old whatever Zune Crane original, 8 years old, however old it is, I just don't love upgrading stuff just to upgrade stuff. Um like I basically have this theory I've talked about it before where like if I get a new piece of gear or whatever it has to either make my life easier and probably of a certain amount easier or it has to make me more money. Um I'm sure it would make my life easier. I'm just not really that hung up on editing though. Like I just don't I don't feel like I'm like slow in my editing or my rendering if I use proxies like it just doesn't seem to be a problem. I love them. They look awesome. If I need a new computer or when I do feel like I'm slowing down, I will absolutely get one of those or whatever the you know newer version is after that. Like the upgrade to the M1 chip, Pro chip or whatever it is, gonna be awesome. Uh, if you need a new computer or you can you know heavily increase your editing time or speeds or whatever with a new computer, 100%. They look great. Um, So brand new living, I'm gonna actually disagree with you on that. Like, I don't think there's any time. Well, first of all, uh, a golden hour like sunset shoot should be in there anyway. Um, that time is not just for me. Like the photographer wants and needs that too and I want them to be there. Um, I don't think that is something where you need to, I don't think that is something that is reasonable to ask for. Just like I wouldn't want a photographer saying, I'm gonna take the bride and groom for 30 minutes at sunset and you can't come. I don't know if that's what you're implying. Um, but I don't think that's what we should be doing as a community, as a creative community, which is, includes photo and video. And also, uh, even if you were like, I think that's a conversation to have with the photographer of saying, hey, I need more time with these. Or like, hey, could I do a few poses? Could I need something that's a little more natural? Um, that's with the photographer. That's not something to include the coordinator in. I think if you include the coordinator in that conversation and make it, be their call and make them kind of talk to the photographer, you're putting them in a weird spot in my opinion. And I think you would not get uh, referrals from that coordinator again. Um, oh, that's kind of cool that hobby and commercial is the same in the UK or essentially or whatever. Um, how do you get good quality video out of a drone? I've not had good success with the DJI Mini 2. Maybe it's just the tiny sensor, hard to make it blend with my R5. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to look different. So I use the Sony's, uh, you know, different Sony cameras that I mentioned. Then I have the DJI Mavic Pro 2 or Mavic 2 Pro or whatever it is, uh, which I did get specifically because it has the one-inch sensor. I had the Phantom 4 before it, which had a one-inch sensor. I also actually still have the Phantom 4, which reminds me I need to sell that. Um, so a one-inch sensor is going to be a little bit better quality. I know people like the Mini 2, I think, so I, it's certainly usable. But um, so I, you know, I, I haven't used the Mini 2, so I don't know that I can speak directly to it. I don't know if you could shoot D-Log. Um, I don't really like doing that because I just don't feel like I'm good at color grading. But if you are good at color grading, that's going to give you a pretty flat profile. Um, I like shooting everything, so I deliver at a 24 you know, frames per second timeline or whatever. I like shooting drone stuff in uh, 30 frames per second and slowing it to 80%. Um, I just like kind of the effect it gives it. It's just like a little more like, a little more dreamy or something, especially if it's like, you know, waves or something like that. And it's not really like slow motion, but it's just like subtle. I really like that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know beyond that, like, yeah, exposing correctly. I like. I, don't, I guess I don't know what the problem is. Um, but the other thing too is like, it might, it might not be fair to compare it to the R5 or something like that. You know, it's kind of comparing apples and oranges to some extent. Uh, yeah, I mean Bruno kind of said the same thing. Correct pro for profile. I actually don't shoot flat. For the reasons I said, if you have D log, that's going to be like your that's your log. I don't know if it does though. Um, but uh, yeah. 
And and yeah, like you're. I don't know what the like uh, the natural ISOs or whatever they're called are for that camera. I don't know how high of an ISO you're going. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, there's just so many. If if you if you have more details, shoot them in there. But yeah, it's just hard for me to know for sure. Uh, Devin. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. I mean, demand what you want. But yeah, burning bridges just kind of sucks in the industry. You don't want to do that. So. Uh, how do I determine where to place and how many lights do I use for open dancing and reception? So we have some videos on this. We have a how to light speeches video uh, on the channel. So I will just refer you to go to that video. It's a couple months old. Um, Jared put that together, did a great job. Um, as far as for the dancing portion, I typically like to have, let's see, how can I? If this is the dance floor, this is the DJ. This is where all the seats are back here. So it looks nice. There's depth, whatever. What I'm typically going to do is I'm going to put one light on one of these corners as my key light because I'm going to be shooting from the, I don't like having the DJ in the background. So I'm probably going to shoot from the side that the DJ is on or like across this way or this way or something, but like generally in this half circle. So I'm shooting this direction and I don't see the DJ. Um, and so I'm going to put a light on one of these corners facing in towards the dance floor. And then I'm going to put a light back here. It might not be on the corner of the dance floor. It might be back in the corner of the room, you know, a Fresnel with a spotlight. That's just kind of a little bit of a rim and also some flare in the background. Um, open dancing, I might shoot towards the DJ and kind of use his lights a little bit, depending on the type of lights. I don't want to burn my sensor. Um, I also might kill one of these lights. I'll mix it up during like dance, like open dancing. Um, but for first dances, that's typically my setup is two lights and they're kind of sandwiched in between. Um, yeah, Mini 2 might not have profiles. I don't know. Um, two biggest problems I've had on a wedding job. How do you overcome them? Oh, man. Uh, well, okay, one of the last BTS videos, I had a camera that was on a tripod. It was on my big handheld rig. And I thought somebody knocked it over. It turns out I think the clasp on my tripod was like slightly loose. And over time, it was just drifting lower, lower, lower until the weight, you know, overtook it and it fell over. Um, luckily, the camera survived. Um, the footage survived. I lost my, I broke my magnetic ND filter holder. It like kind of still worked, but not really. Um, I guess that was more of a scare than like a problem. I don't know, man. Like, I don't know that I've had some like major problems. I've had cameras go down. I've had them freeze. I've had audio come back, you know, blank or corrupted. But the thing is like, I, I'm doing the work ahead of time so that that doesn't matter. Like, would I love to have that footage from that camera? Absolutely, I shot it because I want it, but I also ran a different camera, you know? Like, I just had a wedding where I thought, like, hey, age-old problem, I thought I hit record. 15 seconds into the toast, my screen goes black, which means auto shut off because it wasn't doing anything. That sucks, I thought I hit record, right? But I ran, there were two other cameras running, so I just used one of those, you know? So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have a great answer for that. Uh, what's up, K Productions? Yeah, a uh, an odd time for a live stream. Um, this is not a live film review. This is me. Well, what it was was me saying, hmm, I'm kind of bored. I should probably do a little bit of this monotonous editing. And I was updating my website and stuff. And I said, well, I might as well just go live, see if anybody wants to chat. Um, so I like this. I'd love to do this more often. If you guys are you know, cool, let me know in chat. Like, hey, yeah, this is fun. Like, I figure even if we're all just like working or editing or whatever, like why not have a little bit of community and hang out while we're doing it? So yeah, I could definitely commit. I don't know that it would be like specific times because I'm more of a like when I'm in the mood to edit, like I want to edit. When I'm not in the mood to edit, I'm not going to. Um, but hey, stop licking me. Um, but... I'm totally down. If, if you guys like this, I'm down to always just hop in when I am doing some work um, or Jason probably is as well. 
Um, yeah, where are you at, K Productions? 8.30 p.m. there, so five hours ahead. Hmm. I don't know where that is. Or maybe it's yesterday for you. Hmm. Um... Yeah, I think Benjamin Kelly is saying what I'm saying. Yeah, somebody just asked Ron about the new MacBook Pro. I'm not getting it currently. I don't really feel like I need to upgrade my computer. I'm sure it would be an upgrade. I'm sure it would be great. If you need a new computer, if your computer's slowing down, get it. They're going to be awesome. I don't know if I'm going to get it, though. Um... Yeah, K Productions. I mean, you you'll run into that regardless. Um, sometimes the the flickering lights or banding or whatever it's called. Uh, you can usually mess around with it by changing your shutter speed, um, which can help. There are also plugins to help get rid of it in post. Hit or miss. If it's something where like I just had a wedding actually where it was like the head table and behind it they had string lights, little icicle string lights that like. I mean, I don't know, to the eye it looked okay, but like, they flickered bad. And no shutter speed that I was at could fix that. And so, uh, yeah, I was just like, hey, do you mind if I unplug these? Cause they're kind of ruining the video. I'll plug them in later when I'm not shooting directly at you guys for, you know, toasts or something. So, um, yeah. But yeah, also, if you're in a PAL region, I don't know why you wouldn't just switch. There's not really a reason not to. Uh, I mean, I don't think 25 looks really different than 24. Uh, can I turn my mic up? Yeah, is it quiet for everybody else? Sorry. Uh, I look like I'm almost peaking on mine, but here you go. I'm a little hotter now. I'm also not that close to it. That probably is part of it. I've been leaning back. Um, but I turned it up a little bit for you. Let's see. What do you think about the Sony a7 IV? Uh, no, I do not think that is a mistake. I think that's a great purchase. I'm thinking about buying one. Um, I really need to make up my mind because I missed out on buying the a7S III because I was like, hmm, should I do it? Should I not? And then now they're like sold out everywhere. Um, I think it's gonna be great, especially if you're doing any photo work. Like the A7S III is 12 megapixel photos, which isn't that, or 12, wait, 12 megapixel? Yeah, I think so. Um, I'd still love to have an A7S III. I think they're, it's a great camera. I don't think you're like, you know, like you got screwed because it's, you know, that does 4K60 uncropped. Um, I don't love that the A7 IV is uh, 4K60 cropped. I don't really use 60 frames per second that often though. Um, I'm kind of debating like, should I get the a7 IV or should I get another a7 III? And cause I, I definitely want to upgrade my a7 S2. The autofocus on it just is nowhere near as good as the a7 III. Um, so I do want to do that, but um, yeah, I guess I just don't know hundred percent which direction I'm gonna go, but I, it's a great camera. I think it's gonna be awesome. Um, if I could have only one light to shoot weddings, what would I use? Um, I would probably if, so I haven't used it. Jay and Jared have the Aperture 60 X is one of the newer lights and that is awesome. Um, is this better? Um, so yeah, Aperture 60 X, can this go up? Uh, and then the, ah, it's like the, oh, the Nanlite Forza. Nanlite Forza something. It's brand new. And I can't think of the name other than that. Nanlite Forza. That should be able to find it for you. It's like Nanlite Forza 40 or something like that. That thing is sick and it is so small and so bright. Um, one of those. I also, like, I love the Practolite. It's great. I wish it could throw further, but man, the build quality is so solid on that thing. So one of those is what I would use. I wouldn't use a panel light. It just doesn't throw far enough. It, it, it can be used in conjunction with those other ones, but not on its own, in my opinion. Drink of water. Nope, pop, whatever.
Uh, 50p, 100p for slow mo. I we'll forget use. Yeah, I don't really use slow mo. Uh, but yeah, I know you're talking to uh, somebody else. I forget who it is. Uh, does Sony A7 IV have a setting to remove that flickering? I don't know. Maybe. Possible. Hola, Deste España. Hola, error file. Uh, I can't think. I kind of speak Spanish, but I. My brain's fried right now. But I've been to Spain. It's a cool place. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being here. Uh, I had a wedding where church light was a pain in the ass. Only 40 shutter speed make it look normal. So, yeah, 1 40th. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it is what it is. Like, ultimately, there are theoretical scenarios where there's nothing you can do about it. Usually there's something you can do about it, like using 1 40th or blasting it with your own lights or turning off with the light that's a problem. But sometimes that's not an option. Do I think camera companies are starting to hit a glass ceiling with what they can offer in these new cameras to convince the masses to upgrade? Um, I think that camera companies always have been and always will be probably strategic about not cannibalizing the next tier above them. That is why the a7 IV is 4K60 cropped. I'm sure they are more than capable of making it 4K60 uncropped, but why would you buy the Sony a7S III then? Um, Canon is famous for doing this, of making their DSLRs, knowing what people want and making them just always not quite the perfect camera uh, in an effort to push people towards their cinema line. They did that for a very long time. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's it, they have to do that. It would make no sense for them to come out with a $9,000 cinema camera, $12,000 cinema camera, whatever, and then have them say, oh, but see this mirrorless camera that's $3,000? It can do all the exact same things. It's never going to happen, so... Um, how many weddings do I shoot per year? How long does it take to edit them? So I do about 15 a year now. Um, I don't really want to do more than that. There are years where I will do more than that. Next year is probably like 2022 is probably going to be one of those years just with so many like postponements and cancellations with COVID stuff. Um, I, but if I do more than 15, they have to be pretty well spread out. That means like, you know, here in Minneapolis, wedding season, because we have like pretty harsh winters. So wedding season is mostly, you know, May or June through September, October. Um, but, you know, if I can get a few elsewhere in the world, like out in California, I shoot or whatever pretty often or just anywhere. Um, you know, if I get those in like January or February, then I don't always really count that against my 15 because it's, it's just like it's almost like its own little wedding season. How long does it take to edit them? Uh, you know, I outsource a lot of my editing now. Um, but when I do edit, it's still probably, I don't know, 35 hours or so, but I'm not like a fast editor. That's kind of why I started outsourcing. Um, most demanding requests I had from a bride or groom. I don't really get demands. Uh, I'm just really I think over the years I've been able to hone in and put out the work that shows the type of people and couples and values and whatever that I want to work with. I am not just a vendor. I am a company. I'm providing a service. I'm providing a product. I get that, but I'm also an artist. And I literally have this conversation with every single one of my clients. And I want them to understand that I'm there to create something that I also think is beautiful, that fulfills me creatively. And if I, they want me there as just a vendor to boss around or something like I'm just not the person for them. It takes time to get to that point. Um, but because of it, I really don't get people that make all these demands or something like it's just that's not the type of people that I'm working with. <laughs> yeah, the new menu is gonna be cool and, and autofocus will be great. I, I you know, the crop is like a bummer, but I really just it's not, it's, it is what it is, you know? And I don't really use 4K60, so maybe I shouldn't really, I mean, I won't even use 4K60 really, so maybe I shouldn't even complain. Uh, 
How does the hot shoe hold up on the a7 III? Uh, I don't know. I think good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really test it that often. I have actually mounted the Yola box to it for live streaming. <coughs> um, hasn't broken on me yet, but it's not like I'm doing that every wedding. So I don't know. It's probably, in my opinion, totally fine. But with that said, I'm probably not really pushing it to its limits. But that's kind of odd that Hachu would be breaking from a flash. That's kind of what it's made for. Yeah, Bruno, those are definitely some pros of the A7 IV over some of the other stuff. Um, I mean, also, like, when you're comparing to FX3, you got to take into, like, account the form factor. But, yeah. Um, what I find out about the A7 IV, 1080p have downsampled from 4.2 or 4.7K up to 60 frames per second. So 4K 60 have a crop, but 1080p doesn't. Yeah, 1080p is not cropped. It's full frame. 4K 60 is not. Uh, and it is downsampled. Uh, the sensor is like, what, 4K? It's like downsampled from like, I think it's more than 4.7K. It's like, it's like a bigger sensor. I don't know, I'm just, I've, I could be wrong. Um. Does it really suck? I, you know, it changes things. I don't know that sucks. It's going to give you probably worse rolling shutter. Um, the main thing is that it just changes things. Uh, it's not using the full sensor. Um, is it going to be usable? Totally. A great wedding filmmaker could use a camera that's 10 years old and make something awesome. You know, so. Can it be something that restrains you a little bit if you don't know what you're doing or you're maybe not even pushing your camera that you have now to its max and you just upgrade yeah maybe i don't know bruno what about like medium format stuff you see some of that coming out now which is essentially bigger sensors right uh like digital medium format you know, comparatively of like 35 millimeter film to medium format film, 120 millimeter. Um, you see more companies coming out with affordable and accessible, you know, essentially digital, digital medium format cameras, which I, I think is kind of that next step, especially as they come down in price. But um, who do I outsource my editing to? I have two people that I use pretty consistently. One is local, one is not local. They're both smaller, like kind of independent people. Um, I have used no backlog in the past. Um, I had some good experiences with them. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, other ones that I know that people like are Weditor, RK is creative. Um, I think there's some others as well, but, uh, yeah, there's pros and cons to a big company versus an independent person versus whatever. Um, there are definitely times where I've almost gone back to no backlog or, or chose to edit one myself that I wasn't planning on editing just simply because the people that I'm using are, are too booked up. Um, so that's definitely a pro of a bigger company, but uh, you know, there's also a lot more like easier communication and whatnot, uh, with somebody small or somebody local or whatever. So, Pros and cons to both, um, but yeah, that's that's what I'm doing right now. Ah, that's crazy that the hot shoe's breaking off. Um, do I make other revenue from videos like commercial interviews? Yes, I do some commercial stuff. Really varies year to year on what I do and how much of that I do. Like, you know, for the last two years, I had this big project that took, yeah, it was about two years, year and a half. Um, you know, I probably won't have something like that for a while again, but who knows? Um, commercial stuff is harder. Like I'm pretty consistent with weddings. Commercial stuff is kind of like some years I have a lot, some years I have a little. Um, yeah, 7K full frame readout. That's what I was thinking of. Um, Yeah. 
I made it to the end of the comments. Hit me with more questions as I start to actually do a little bit of work. Let this time we get too far ahead of ourselves selves today. I want you to just take a moment and look out. Turn that way. If I if I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the poor. Uh oh, this doesn't line up. Swim throughout this service. Alright, let's make that that. Let's do this. I personally think the A7 III would be a good upgrade from the 6D Mark II. Uh, I mean, keeping in mind, of course, that you're, you know, totally changing camera systems, so there's a lot that comes along with that. Uh, can you submit a film for review? Yes, you may. Uh, if you go to our website, which I'll type in here, it's just weddingfilm.school. And then go to the uh, live or the review tab or whatever. Submit there. Um, biggest failure on a wedding day. Hit me with the hard questions. Um. I had a wedding where I did not have a second camera rolling for, I had a camera go down earlier in the day. So this is kind of like perfect storm stuff. Camera went down earlier in the day. And so I only had two cameras with me, or I only had two cameras like set up. I don't know why, but for some reason, I was like, it was like a grand entrance right into the father of the bride's speech. And his speech, you know how it's like, oh, it's a welcome speech. But his speech was like his actual speech, not just a welcome speech. And my second shooter was like, I was gimbling in behind them for the uh, grand entrance. And then I was going to switch that camera to a different lens, put it on the couple. So like I was going to be a few minutes. Audio was rolling, so I got nice clean audio, but the uh, my second shooter thought she was rolling her camera and was not. Uh, which I you know is not maybe my mistake, but it ultimately falls on me. And so that was a mistake. That sucked because I it's like it, it never really happens because I almost always have a backups. Like I almost always have other cameras, and I would have you know, had another camera set up, went over, checked, you know, it was very avoidable, but yeah. Um, have I considered using cine lenses for my videos? Um, I don't really use cine lenses. I mean, I do have like one of the Rokinon cine lines, but those, you know, that's whatever. Uh, but Jason, actually they're not cinema lenses. Um, <coughs> at least not the ones I have. Um, it's just declicked. Uh, but Jason and Jared, I believe, do use cine lenses on certain weddings for their high-end brand, I believe. Ask us in the next live stream when Jay and Jared are here, because they could talk to you about that. Uh, do I find that sometimes adding an extra camera or microphone for safety on a solo shoot ends up taking some of the time where you could be shooting something else? Uh, I, I would say it's worth it. I don't really solo shoot. I, I personally think having a second shooter makes your films way better, um, makes my life easier, makes gives me more variety in my edit, etc. cetera. Um, but if I were solo shooting, I would totally take the time to, uh, to set up, you know, extra, essentially set up backups. I think that's well worth it. 
Yeah, and it's doable. You can run two, three, four cameras for a ceremony or toast or whatever. It's not that hard for those things especially. How many weddings do I shoot solo? Uh, almost none. I shot an elopement this past weekend up on the North Shore, Minneapolis, or North Shore, Minnesota. Uh, I shot that solo because it was an elopement. There were only like 10 people total, super low key day. Like legit everybody in the middle of the day went and took a nap. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm trying to think if that was like one of the, that might be the only wedding that I've shot solo in a decade. I just don't shoot solo. Um, are we watching films today or just Q&A? So just Q&A today. I don't think films. We have to do some prep work into films because we have to get the licenses and stuff like that. Um, but we're doing that. I believe we're back actually uh, on Thursday, Thursday evening. So um, that's when we do those. Maybe some of these... Not today, because I'm, I'm just not like prepared or in the right mindset or whatever, But um, and I'm kind of trying to work. But some of these times where I'm just going to pop in randomly and go live or whatever, uh, maybe I'll take some live like from people in the comments, take some live uh, you know, film submissions and just do them right then and there. So uh, thoughts on using a small LED panel or loom cube on camera for dancing party shots? I don't, I wouldn't cycle colors. I mean, look, I think, look, I think on camera lighting looks bad. It's flat. It's boring. It's not dynamic. With that said, can you make things look good that are out of the box and not what everybody's doing? Yeah, there's probably a way to make it look interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I probably am not like, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I would do that but I might be a little more like just kind of stuck in my ways. I don't know. It's not, it's not a bad idea. You can try it, especially like, look, <clears throat> excuse me. You get, you know, you're at open dancing for 30 minutes. You've got everything you need. Experiment. It's not like you have to use it. Right. So I don't know. Give it a try. could be cool. But generally I think on camera lighting looks bad. Reading. from the. But that's just me. Well, it's not just me. A lot of other people think that too, but. All right, this is all lined up now. I'll get back to some questions in a second. I just want to throw my settings on here. Why did this end up this way? All right. Um, uh, where are we at? Uh, uh, I spent the last year compacting my kit as much as possible, and I have a single rolling case with three cameras, four lenses, drone gimbal, three tripods, flashes, Fresnel light, and light stand. It's heavy, though. Yeah, I would imagine that's pretty heavy. Um, Yeah, I I definitely like the idea of like kind of getting your kit to be smaller, if possible. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think I think there's something to be said for that, especially if you're shooting solo. I think you'd have to have a small kit, honestly. Wait, what? what turned off snapping. It's turned off. Um, Yeah, 16309. Um I have one backpack and that's pretty much what I have on me. And then I have a rolling case. And then I have a bunch of What do you do with like tripods and stuff? That's not uh three tripods in a Wait, wait, wait. One rolling case has your cameras and your tripods and stuff. I have separate cases for that, but Hey, you do you. If you found a way to do it, more power to you. Uh, 
cameras first. Camera two. Um. Yeah, Bruno doesn't like on camera lights. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm with you on that. I just, yeah, I don't know. Um, same here, just a thought. Yeah, but hey, I mean, with that said, like, <coughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm like, this is so much more talking than I normally do. Um, with that said, trends are set from people trying things different and new. You don't really see people doing that. You don't see people doing it well if you do see people doing it. So if you find a way to do it and do it well, could really work out, could set you apart. So that's why I say like, hey, if you've got this creative idea, you want to try it out, try it out. Don't sacrifice the stuff that you know looks good and works and whatever, but try it out. All right, this is not sounding right. Uh... Wait, can you guys hear my uh, my audio? I think you can. Um, uh, Yusef, we're really only doing wedding films. I mean, I, I think a lot of what we teach here can apply to travel films or just filmmaking in general, interviews, stuff like that. Uh, but for our live reviews, we're really only doing wedding films. I mean, they could be like an engagement film teaser film stuff like that but i think wedding related is what we're trying to do um ali have I people complain about reception lighting um i have had two times one was a guest and or er, wait no what was it, it was the Oh, shoot. This was super recent. I'm trying to think. And they're like, can you turn the lights down? Oh, wait, wait. Hold on. Let me think through this. Oh, man. I can't remember who it was. Oh, it was the father of the bride. It was like, can you turn the lights down? And I was like, um, sure. So I did a little bit. I don't know. It was his first dance or whatever, uh, father daughter dance. But like, I needed those lights. I it was very odd. I, I didn't really understand. So whatever. Um, I have had a DJ ask me to turn them off, and I was just like, hey, I'm gonna like I'm gonna leave them up for like 10, 15 minutes just to get the open dancing footage I need, and then I'll leave them off for the rest of the night. Um, that seemed to work. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, if you're using the lights the right way, like the father bride first dance, like they weren't in his eyes. They weren't like they weren't anything negative i'm really unsure why he asked me and they were only on the dance floor area they were not affecting anybody else but yeah if you use them the right way they're up high enough the only the only potential complaint you should get is from the dj who thinks you're killing his mood but in reality if his dance floor is not packed it's not because you're light so um we ever do a video on how to do white balance and exposure in log picture profile uh maybe i don't shoot in log uh jay and jared might uh i know we've done a actually on one of our live streams we took somebody else's uh excuse me b-raw footage from a black magic camera and he had submitted in the past um he was one of our members um which if you guys are interested in becoming a member it's five bucks a month to start um which we try to keep pretty cheap just gets you some perks like um a private facebook group we're a little bit more available in that you can reach us pretty directly with any questions um you also get kind of priority in getting your films reviewed stuff like that you can hit the little join button which is right next to subscribe here on youtube um and it just supports the channel which we appreciate um lets us do things like this um but with that said uh yeah so he was a member and we actually took we were like hey one of the one of the issues that we saw in a lot of his films was the color grade was just kind of all over the place and not where it should be and so we asked him to just drop box, drop box us his raw footage and we like live graded um some of it on there which was cool um 
Peak Design tripods. Okay, yeah, those are cool. Uh, that's the uh, backpack I use. I love Peak Design. Um, You're a photographer complaint. Why would they complain about lighting? That should help them. That's stupid. They probably don't know what they're doing. Uh, same photographer was causing problems all day and holds up again when we were trying to get outside during. Yeah, that's sounds like they have their own issues. Um, for longer edits, do you include copyrighted music? Uh, what exactly are you talking about? Like, are you talking like ceremony edit? Ceremony edit for me never goes public. Uh, it is audio that was captured at the event. I, I think maybe you have to kind of license it maybe, but it's maybe kind of a gray area. Whereas like a highlight film that I'm putting music, I'm syncing music, you know, I'm obtaining a sync license to sync that music and make a film to that music. It's not captured raw at the event, <coughs> et cetera, is a different story. If it's just like, hey, here's my minute for minute recap of the uh, of the ceremony. Here's your full ceremony edit. You know, right now I am putting whatever is captured is in there, but I'm not laying in new tracks or anything like that. But yeah, I don't know. I think that's what most people do. It's kind of a gray area. It's never public. It's yeah, I don't know. That's my answer. Um, We just submitted YouTube link. Uh, yeah, Alan, if you go to the link that I put in, uh, just www.weddingfilm.school, and then go to review, there's a little form you have to fill out because we do need the like the music that you licensed. We need to know where you got it from so that we can license it or use your license or whatever. Uh, we ask you some questions just so that we know a little bit more about the day because usually when we're doing the live reviews, people want to know hey, like, what did they shoot on? Stuff like that. So any backstory you've got for us, what you think went well, what you think went poorly, whatever. And then, yeah, it's just a YouTube link or, um, you know, Vimeo link or whatever. You can send us different links. Uh, your rig has a Sigma 24 to 70 on it. Is it all time on your camera when you swap it at some point? So I don't use that rig anymore, actually. Um, I switched to just a harness. I love it. There's pros and cons. It's working for me right now. Um, so I don't really use the 24 to 70 anymore either because I don't have a follow focus uh, set up on the system that I'm using now. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a great lens. I love that lens, but it has to be like, you know, native so you can autofocus or have a follow focus in my opinion. I think it's hard to go handheld and manual focus without a rig like that. Uh, yeah, Yusef, no problem. I mean, you sent it. We'll just ignore it. No biggie. Um, yeah, I always talk to... That's so annoying, Bruno. I always talk to the DJ about his lighting. Like, I'm just like, in the very beginning, I'm like, hey, so as far as lights go, like have at it at the party section, but for the bride and groom, first dance, parent dances, no lights, please. I'm gonna set up my own lights. And sometimes they'll be like, oh, I can just throw white lights up or yellow lights if you want. And I'm just like, yeah, I'll use my own lights, thanks. Just kind of cut that out on the early side. Um, there are some places where you can license more popular songs, but yeah, I mean, the people who aren't licensing it at least in the U.S., you are risking your business. Oh, Jared coming in hot from the Wedding Film School channel with hell no to shooting log. That's how I feel. Yeah, I didn't know if you guys shot log or not. Um, I don't shoot log. I don't want to shoot log. I think it's more work than I want to deal with. That's why. But to each their own, I know people who love it. Um... Uh, Yep, there's definitely been lawsuits. Uh, more than one. Uh, landing your first wedding gig. I think that you should shoot for somebody else. I said this earlier in the stream. Shoot for somebody else for a year or two. Learn the ropes. Learn the ropes without your neck on the line. That's huge. 
um, you might be able to just get some referrals from that. You know, from if somebody contacts the person you're working for and they're like, they charge five grand and the person has a budget of 1500, maybe they say, hey, well, I've got this shooter. Maybe he'd take it on or something like that. Um, you can also do something for free. I wouldn't do too many. Um, yeah, there's different ways. I don't know. Friends, you can put yourself out there. I mean, look, you could do a Craigslist ad, do a wedding for free if you need something in your portfolio. But I guess what I'm saying is like, if you get into that, doing something for free or way cheap before you're really ready to make portfolio pieces, then it's kind of a waste of your time. You're just going to find yourself stuck there and you'd be better off shooting for somebody else probably and learning that way. Um, okay, if I, if I denied food at the wedding, would I delete the wedding photos and leave? Uh, yeah, so there's a lot more to that story. I think you've seen, they were like, he, that person wasn't even an actual wedding photographer. They were like a pet photographer. They were getting paid like 200 bucks to do it for their friend who treated them like shit. And that's my understanding. So uh, I actually have food in my contract. I'm there for eight, 10, 12 hours. I'm going to eat. Uh, I prefer that my couple feeds me. If they do not feed me, I'll be taking an hour break and I'll be also charging a fee to pay for myself and my team to eat. Uh, it's pretty expected here in the US at least. If you're doing you know, work at a certain level or working within weddings that are of a certain budget that you eat food. That's pretty common. So uh, you might not get a lot of time to eat food, but you do get to eat. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, Bruno, first weddings for cheap or free were good to develop your workflow. I guess what I'm saying is like, make sure you have the knowledge you need to make use of that. If you're going to do something for cheap or free, you don't want to do two years worth of weddings for cheap or free, you know, like make sure that you're going to like, don't, don't spend those weddings learning how to shoot a wedding learning or no, spend those weddings, learning how to shoot a wedding, but don't spend those weddings learning how to shoot video. You know what I mean? Like, know what you're doing to a certain extent. Uh, I'm not going to share my contract because I paid money for that. And you can hire a lawyer to create a contract for you, or you can buy contracts, templates, uh, that are pre-made for wedding filmmakers. Um, there are pre-made ones on some uh, CRM tools. I don't know which ones off the top of my head. Um, but... Yeah, those are things that cost money, so you got to pay for them. All right. Hmm. I'm going to turn my uh, computer sound off so you don't have to listen to me edit audio without seeing it because it's boring. And also, it's probably going to have some music that I can't use here. Oh, it does. What is this? A thousand years or whatever? Or no, no. I can't think of what this is. Yeah, Rocket Lawyer. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's a few like that. A few options.
Sorry, I'm I'm deep in my edit right now. Why did this zoom in? That's weird. Um Uh, uh, I filmed my first wedding free for a friend. Didn't know what white pants was. My ex fee were cheap. Then bumped my price up. Yeah, I think that's the way to do it. Look, there's no right or wrong way. It's not like if you do it this way, you will fail. If you do it this way, you will succeed. You know, there's lots of variables. What do I think about outsourcing editing? I love it. I outsource a lot of my editing. I think that everybody should consider it. I think that there are lots of people who say, oh, it won't have my personal touch. Oh, I can edit better. And I think that they're wrong, quite frankly. I think most people who think that nobody else could edit their films, in most scenarios, there are outliers. There are some people doing phenomenal work. A lot of them are leaders in the industry. You know, um, you talk about Alex and Whitney from Sculpting with Time, Henry Martins, um, Bottle Brush Films, um, Fire and Ice. Uh, there's lots of people who are doing amazing, amazing work. A lot of them are stand out, standing out, right, and teaching on that. Um, but some of those people even outsource some editing probably as well. So uh, I think most people that aren't creating these very, very out-of-the-box unique films, their work could be edited by an editor. Whether or not they want to admit it, different scenario. But yeah, nothing wrong with it. Pros and cons, of course, but yeah. Hello, sir. Please make a golden title in Final Cut Pro X. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, do I offer a full ceremony speeches? My highlight. Yes, my collections include ceremony and speeches. I'm thinking about taking those out. Like I'm always thinking about ways to like increase my profits, rearrange my collections. Like sometimes you can increase profits without increasing my price. Like could I keep should I keep my price point at the same starting price and just make it a highlight film only? And then if you want the uh, ceremony and reception, you have to pay a little bit more. And then therefore I increase, you know, my income probably through a handful, uh, of my clients who want that paying for it. And then the nice thing too, is like, there's plenty of clients who I think literally never watched their ceremony film. So why am I doing that work? So I don't know. I'm tossing the idea around right now. Yeah. HoneyBook has templates. Yep. All right, uh, Kanu Web Media, if you post that one more time, I am going to ban you. Don't spam chat. Um, yeah, the other thing is you have to be able to afford outsourcing. It has to be worked like you have to be profitable or, you know, whatever. So, like, you got to work out the numbers, too. Yeah, they don't always mic for vows. You're kind of relying on the officiant to turn, if it's a handheld mic, to turn it towards them. Doesn't always happen. Um, that's why I always have a mic on the groom as well, and sometimes the bride, although not that often. That's what we're talking about with like backups. Because the other thing is like his DJ's audio could go down. The mic could be too far. Like I'm literally editing right now, and I'm pretty sure I remember that the mic was really far away from the DJ, and it was cutting out. I'm about to find out for sure, but. So yeah, guys, this is a Q&A while I'm just doing some editing of a ceremony, which is kind of mindless editing. Um, if you got any questions about anything, let me know. I'm happy to answer. Uh, I don't know. What do you want to know about me? Just so I, I'm worth asking questions to. I don't know. I, this is my 15th year shooting weddings. Almost all of that is full time. Uh, shot all around the world. Currently, I'm one of the owners of Wedding Film School here, teaching what I can to everybody else. I don't have all the answers. Not everything I do is right or wrong. It's not always black and white. I have my way of doing things. Jay and Jared have their way of doing things. Sometimes we overlap, sometimes we don't. But I am an open book. I believe in sharing any information that I've learned and knowledge I've learned with anybody else in the industry and ultimately just making the, the industry better overall.
So hit me with some questions. I'm gonna let some questions stack while I do a tiny bit more editing here. How many weddings does everybody have left this season, 2022? I've got two more. Pretty sure, yeah, two more. And I'm in Minneapolis, for whatever that's worth. Because we kind of have like a hard stop on our, uh, hard stop on our uh, wedding season. Let's see. Based in Scotland, most video for sure charge 600 euro for a full documentary. I'm double for four to five. Highlight and teaser still unable to, unable to afford outsourcing. Uh, yeah. I don't know what that is in dollars, but it's not that much. So outsourcing probably isn't doable at that rate. Uh, audio related. Just ordered an F6 for next year's weddings. Hoping to save myself from any problems from bad sources. Come here. Kodak is in the chat. Um, yeah, F6 is good. I haven't used one. I know people who do and like them. So, yeah, good luck. Not a question, just sharing. Yeah, good luck. Um, yeah, Bruno, if you're charging, I mean, I don't know what prices are there. 1995 is not a whole lot for the U.S. at least. But if you're having a turn down work because you're too booked, it's time to up prices right now. Uh, what is a golden title? Don't egg him on. <laughs> uh, yeah, DR10L is awesome. See, I, I like the TX660. I just did a video on it. For certain use cases, it does not replace the DR10L for me. But for certain use cases... I like it. I like putting it on the mic. I've done that the last handful of weddings. Nice to have, just for the peace of mind. Allie's got five left. I've got two left. Bruno's got two left. 12 on the editing queue. Ooh, you're not out of the thick of it yet. Done for the year is Linden. Four weddings left for K Productions. Is it important for you from which country the editor is? Um... Yes and no. There are pros and cons. If the editor is in a country where, you know, for me at least, English is not their native language, that can be an issue. Um, doesn't mean it is an issue, but it can be an issue. Communication can be more difficult. Uh, the audio selects they take could be not what I would pick. Um, there's things that can get lost in translation. So there are issues, but that doesn't automatically make them a bad editor or anything. So it's not like a, it's not black and white. It's not yes and no. Oh, what's up? Manitoba, Canada. I was just up almost in Canada. Let's see. Where would I have been if I were in Canada? I'm going to look it up. I would have been Thunder Bay. Where's that? I mean, I wasn't in Thunder Bay, but Thunder Bay is in Ontario. Yeah, because it's more the eastern side of Minnesota. So I just shot a wedding on the an elopement on the North Shore, which was near there, kind of an hour or two. Um, average time spent editing the footage versus the audio, I don't really know. I don't have a breakdown for that. Fifteen for Jared. What 
Look, A7 III to A7 IV, is it an upgrade? Yes, probably. I mean, yes, it is. You can do 4K60, it's crop, but whatever, you can do it on the A7 IV. Is it a major upgrade? I don't know. There are other benefits. There's a new, new menu system. Um, you know, the autofocus and the internal stabilization is even, you know, better theoretically, stuff like that. Uh, the photo side probably increased from the A7 III as well, although I, I haven't really looked at that as much. So is it an upgrade? Yes. Is it going to revolutionize your world? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's a good camera, though. How many total lights do I normally use for speeches? Typically two. Sometimes I'll use three if I want to put one on like the couple or something and it, like and the other lights aren't hitting them, but typically two. Young Nuo YN 216. Uh, I know it's not like a super reliable brand. What was it? TN? Wait. Young Nuo YN 216. I'm going to look him up for you right now. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so it's not bicolor, so that's not great. I mean, you can get around it, but whatever. It, I can't imagine that it's that bright if it's only $50. So my answer is probably not. My answer is invest in good lights. Good lights are going to last you forever. And it doesn't even have to be like a crazy amount more than that. Like uh, if Jared's still here, the... Uh, oh yeah, geez. Um, um, uh, the God, what's the name of the the Nanlite Forza I was talking about before? Is that what it is, Jared? If you're here, Nanlite Forza. Um, that thing's super powerful. It's like what three hundred dollars or something. So, after sixty X, few hundred. You know what is that? Four, five hundred dollars. Look, it's worth it to invest in a good light. It just is. <coughs> Uh, da, 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 da. One wedding left. Just bought the road. Might go two. Watch out with that. I haven't used it. I don't really like that system, but uh, I know people have had some issues. Yep, they're not super reliable always, so just make sure you you do your due diligence. Yeah, the Forza, Nanlite Forza for studio stuff. Maybe for weddings, who knows? But yeah, all that to say, you do probably have to spend a little bit more than that to get a solid light. And I would almost say even the people who are like, oh, yeah, no, I use this light. It, like, no offense to anybody who's like, oh, I use it. It looks great, whatever. I just, I sometimes question if they've used one of the lights that we're, like, actually recommending because it's just world. Like, you can just set it up in a corner, corner of the room, and get put it high enough, get it on the dance floor, just so out of the way and stuff like that. I'm editing. You can see my head bob timing out the beats. Oh yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Something got screwed up. Ooh, back to the top, back to the top.
Yeah, Aperture 60X. Okay, yeah, 400 bucks. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's hard to compete with that, and it's worth every penny. Getting a light that's reliable is just... It's worth it. It's worth it, guys. Uh, I do do that sometimes in my... I'll mark... Um, maybe not every beat. I know some people would do that, but I will mark certain parts of songs that I want to utilize for certain things. Um, right now I'm just doing a ceremony edit though. So I'm just going through it real time and cutting angles and whatever. Gotta find this real quick. Um, hold on, hold on. Please hold. I'm getting some lag. All right. Um, 60X is so good. Definitely worth it. Yeah. I mean, especially for 400 bucks. Got the Godox. Yeah, Godox is cool. Uh, that's actually what this light is. It's one of the old SL60W. Works fine for this. It's also like, I mean, you can actually literally see it in frame because uh, I'm way wider than I normally am. So it's like, you know, two feet from my face. Um, I don't really love them for weddings without a Fresnel on it personally, but yeah. All right, guys, I got to finish up this edit, and then I got to head out pretty soon here. So I think I'm going to be wrapping this up soon. Um, just check it's Godox ML60. Don't know anything about it. Uh, yeah, after 60X, when you got the budget, definitely recommend it. Um, cool. So I don't know, guys. Let me know in the comments if you like this. Like, this was spur of the moment. I was just doing some editing, figure out hop on. If you guys like this, we'll do it more often. Uh, we've still got our normal live streams on Thursday evenings where we're reviewing, re reviewing uh, your guys' films. You can submit those at winningfilm.school. Um, also, become a member. It supports the channel. We appreciate it. Uh, you know, helps contribute to making all this free content for you guys. Gets you guys some things as well, including some cool badges um, in chat, uh, priority in getting your films reviewed, access to a private Facebook group, stuff like that. Um, and yeah, as always, like, you know, share videos, leave a comment, stuff like that. That always helps us too. Like if you don't want to support us monetarily, totally get it. Um, but yeah, we always love when you just like, share, that kind of thing. It's pretty easy for you to do, of course. In fact, right now, if you want to hit like on your way out, um, just helps us. Hey, what's up, Ethan? You're, uh, we're on the way out. Sorry, you're late. 
but this was unplanned. Um, but yeah, we'll do some more of these hangs just while I'm editing easy enough. Uh, thanks for all your questions. Uh, I think we had some good conversation. And yeah, I think we're going to be live Thursday evening. So uh, it should be 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, submit your films for that. And uh, we've got some awesome videos in the works. We've got a video with the new uh, Peter McKinnon mist filters. Uh, we're working on that. We've got some BTS stuff in the works, I think. Yeah, got a lot of stuff. So um, see you guys in the next video. Thanks for coming.